If you were asked to list what you know about Argentina, what would you say? Besides Messi and Maradona, how would you describe Argentina? Do you think of the world's poorest neighborhoods? Or perhaps the tango dance born from the lower social classes? Maybe Argentina evokes thoughts of a place where you can find friendly people on a tight budget and enjoy an endless nightlife. Or perhaps you're a food enthusiast and you're well aware of the asado barbecue frenzy in this country where some of the world's most delicious beef is raised despite not caring about money in your pocket. Argentina is the land of those who can enjoy meat and dance wildly. However, Argentina is not limited to just these aspects. It's a country that goes beyond all of these. It stretches down towards the southern tip of the world, where it's often referred to as the end of the world, all the way to Ushuaia, where the sun doesn't shine as you head further south. For instance, Ushuaia indeed holds the title of the southernmost city in the world. Below this, there are living spaces but they are primarily military bases or research stations for scientists. In other words, Argentina is located just above the world's largest and massive glaciers. Glaciers lies just a bit further south. So let's start with football and try to understand the details of life in Argentina. Firstly, this is truly a place where football legends are born and the roots of world stars grow. Do you know where the Maradona legend played his football? Not because of geography or living standards, but because of his football. Here's the Boca Junior Stadium, where Maradona shone, and this is their biggest rivals, River Plate. They are considered the world's fieriest and biggest derby. Whenever these two teams face off in Argentina, it's as if a world war breaks out among the fans. Whoever wins between these two teams turns the Obelisco Square in the capital Buenos Aires into a carnival area. Remember Argentina won the last World Cup a few months ago and Lionel Messi dedicated the trophy to his country. On that day, Obelisco Square in Argentina was filled with more people than even the largest rallies and the streets were closed to traffic. So even if you go to Argentina just for a visit, Obelisco is one of the symbolic places you must see. It holds the same value for Buenos Aires as the Eiffel Tower does for Paris. It was built in the 1930s and adds visual richness to the city. Now let's talk about Boca Juniors, one of the city's two biggest clubs. This is what the stadium looks like from above. To be honest, it doesn't look very impressive. The stadium is old and not suitable for expansion. Homeowners and shop owners in the nearby La Boca neighborhood refuse to sell their properties. Carrying anything red inside or near the stadium is also prohibited because red and white are the color of River Plate and represent hatred for Boca Juniors. For example, Coca-Cola sponsors this team, but they are forbidden from advertising inside the stadium using the color red. So the love for football in Argentina is unlike anywhere else in the world. People are incredibly passionate and they prioritize football over their economy. In Maradona's team, fans call themselves the 12th man. This is their way of expressing that they are united with the 11 players on the field and that they are one big family. Argentina has a neighborhood system. Each neighborhood looks after its own people and has its own rules. You must adapt to and follow the customs of the neighborhood you are in. For instance, if you have an argument with someone, the wrongdoing is not seen as against you personally, but against your neighborhood. This leads to conflicts between neighborhoods. Or if electricity is being used illegally in your neighborhood, you should also use it illegally and not report it to the police. This is why Buenos Aires isn't as rosy as it may seem. Additionally, people there constantly consume a plant that they are almost addicted to. They call it mate, and they describe it as a kind of tea. Nearly every Argentine is addicted to this plant. It contains caffeine and has a stimulating effect on the body. It's not just regular folks. Even billionaires like Messi can't do without this plant. The plant called mate 
grows on the borders of Brazil and Uruguay, but is incredibly easy to consume. You mix it with hot water, shake it, and then sip it using a regular straw. What's strange is that this plant is said to have been brought into these lands from outside in the 1920s and began to be cultivated in Argentina. Today, the people who consume this plant, the most after Argentina, are Syrians. Following them are Jordanians and Lebanese. Another thing that Argentines are very proud of is their caramel. When you look at it from afar, you might think it's a kind of peanut butter. But no, it's caramel and according to Argentines, the most delicious caramel in Latin America is produced in Argentina. It tastes just like regular caramel, but much denser and lingers in your mouth. You can find these Argentine caramels called Dulce de Leche in almost any store. Another mouth-watering experience in the country is their barbecue called asado. Perhaps you've seen restaurants called asado in your own country. Well, their origins are actually in Argentina, this country, which feeds its cows with some of the world's finest grass ranks, third in the list of the most delicious beef. They have created a national dish called asado by grilling the back part of the cow which is one of the most delicious parts of the animal. They separate the meat from the bones and enjoy it alongside every dish, including hamburgers. Especially in the capital, there's a place called Don Julio, and they've become masters of this craft. They've been recognized as one of the top 10 restaurants in the world for six consecutive years, and even Messi goes to that place to have Asada. They use the world's finest cattle feed, produced by a Saudi Arabian company called Al Marai, and they slaughter the cattle fed with these feeds to serve their customers. If you walk the streets of Argentina and look closely at the faces of the people, you'll see that many of them resemble Europeans. Indeed, 51% of Argentinians are actually of Italian descent. The rest are composed of Spaniards who settled in these lands after the colonial years and the local Native Americans. They identify themselves as Argentinians and don't have an obsession with their origins. The wealthier ones among them live by the Tiger Canal in the capital. Expensive houses have been built around this canal for the wealthy in Buenos Aires, and they are encouraged to live here. When viewed from above, the city is divided by the canal and connected to each other by artificial bridges. In this way, it's somewhat reminiscent of Amsterdam. This canal that divides the city is not artificial, it's a natural river. One sad detail in the capital is the segregation of the rich in one area and the poor in another. This class distinction exists in Argentina as it does everywhere in the world. For example, right next to the train tracks, there's a neighborhood called Villa 31, and they consider it equivalent to the favelas in Brazil. In fact, it's considered the most dangerous and poorest neighborhood in Argentina. The narrow streets are filled with police officers, and you should leave all your valuables in your hotel before entering. Every street corner is filled with unsightly cables and unpainted brick houses. The cables have been randomly thrown there by the poor locales because with those cables, they are actually stealing electricity from the neighboring districts. Also, shanties are stacked on top of each other and a different family lives on each floor. There's no internal stair system for them to move up and down within the building. Therefore, they go up and down the floors using fire escape stairs. If you need protection from a police officer, you can only shoot comfortably in that way. But when you look at their faces, they actually look innocent because they're forced to live there due to impossibilities. It's evident in everything they do. The only common point that brings together the poor and the rich under the same roof in the country is, of course, football. Until 1930, Argentina was one of the world's wealthiest countries. However, since 2001, it has been battling hyperinflation. The children of those who migrated to this country during its affluent periods are now seeking ways to move away from Argentina in pursuit of a better economy. In the capital, 
you'll find black market money changers on every street corner shouting Cambio Cambio. Their business is to exchange dollars at more appealing rates than the official exchange rate, making profit. As a result, Argentina, along with Venezuela and Zimbabwe, leads the list of countries where currency is at its least valuable. One US dollar officially equals 350 pesos, and salaries in the country are only around $400. In the black market, however, you can exchange one dollar for up to 500 pesos. If you make a credit card purchase at a store in Argentina, you're making a big mistake. This is because using a credit card will result in your money being withdrawn at the official rate. In Argentina, you should exchange your dollars for a higher rate with black market money changers and make cash purchases in stores. But do Argentinians give up the pleasures of life despite their terrible economy? Of course not. They even have a dance born from the lower class, and they call it tango. This dance, originating from the slums of Argentina, eventually became famous through local performances and then spread worldwide, becoming one of Argentina's cultural heritages. If tango seems too dull for you, Buenos Aires nightlife is more than enough to take your mind off all your troubles. The claim that the most well-groomed people in Latin America are in Argentina also appears to be true, despite the devalued currency. Moreover, despite the currency's low value, there are always lines at nightclubs. Even around 3 in the morning, people in Argentina don't seem to want to stop the fun. It seems that Argentinians, despite all the negatives, don't neglect music and glamorous lives. This is the grave of San Martin, whom Argentinians consider their father. In his time, he liberated Argentina, Peru, and Chile from the Spaniards, ensuring the freedom of these three countries. Anyone living in Argentina who is a native of the country knows San Martin very well. Remember, in South America, Colombia, Venezuela, and Ecuador were also liberated by a commander named Simon Bolivar from the Europeans. As we approach the end of the video, we can't forget to talk about Argentina and mention Patagonia. This is the southernmost region of Chile and Argentina. The world's southernmost city is right here, and trips to Antarctica are often planned from this region. It's a place that's desolate, quiet, and tranquil, far away from people and technology, nestled among glaciers and frozen mountains. From above, it resembles the Himalayas, and in the midst of all this natural beauty, this city in the midst of the aridness offers a sign of life. Just imagine living right next to glaciers. And the Andes Mountains, they truly look magnificent and have a soothing effect on one's soul. Argentina is an affordable and fun country to live in. However, it might be one of the last countries you'd consider going to in order to make a living. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like it, subscribe to the channel for free, or become a member to support us. Goodbye.